Today I am going to clean some bottles using PBW, which is a great way to get these things clean and ready to receive uh, homebrew. I've got some uh, wine bottles here that are going to be used for some mead that I have going on right now. Uh, this is super easy. All I like to do is uh, I have some buckets here and they are uh, taller than any of the bottles that are in them. I've got a couple of taller uh, bottles here that I'm not going to bother putting in the buckets. Um, the reason I like to have them in buckets is that I'm going to actually have them covered up with the water and that way uh, you won't wind up with any residue kind of around the lip because that uh, the water will sort of, uh, uh, it kind of drops down after a while as the PBW is doing its thing. Uh, so these ones here I'll just have to give a little wipe around the rim uh, <laughs> when it's done. Um, super easy to do. All I do is just make sure to uh, add just a little bit of PBW to each of the vessels. Uh, the larger they are, the more that I will let in them. Uh, and then just a little bit on the outside as well. And then we'll be ready to fill up with some water. Especially, uh, I like to have PBW on the outside so it's in all of the water for the bucket that has the swing tops in it, just to make sure that uh, the actual lids wind up getting cleaned as well. Um, so at this point, it's really easy. All I'm going to do is start to fill and I'll fill up each bottle uh, at least halfway so it doesn't try to float. And once I've got that done, then I will actually just spray off on the side here so that the, the whole bucket will, will fill up and you just have to get at least higher than the bottles. Uh, so that's gonna be really boring to watch. So once I've got uh, both buckets done, we'll take a look. Okay, so these are filled up here. You can see I put all the taller bottles in the one bucket because I need the water to cover the top of them. So there's no point in having one taller one in here just uh, to make it so I'd have to have way more water in this bucket. You can see with these ones, the standalone ones, they were swing tops. I just popped the uh, swing top part off and just chucked it in one of these buckets so they can clean as well. And you can see already that um, some of uh, the volume has uh, dropped down in these. So every hour or so as I happen to walk by here, I'll just top them up with a tiny bit of water just to keep that level up as high as possible. And it's also because of that drop down that I'm gonna need, uh, need to wind up kind of just uh, rubbing off some of any dried residue that might be on there. Now, right now it's around noon. Um, I could theoretically deal with these after dinner or sometime before bed or whatever, but uh, if I don't have time today, I'll just do it sometime tomorrow morning. Uh, that extra time certainly isn't going to hurt them. Uh, I usually try to save uh, a certain number of bottles until I have one, uh, you know, at least enough to fill a bucket like this, just because uh, this is my preferred way to do it. So <laughs> maybe in some of my other videos, if you caught a glance of the floor there, uh, you might have seen some balls kind of kicking around down underneath the sink, and that's why I've got those there. So anyway, at this point, we just wait, um, and then it's going to be time to rinse later on. Okay, so it's the next day. These have had uh, a decent amount of time in there doing their thing. Um, so I'm just going to drain them out and then I rinse them all out. And this is also a good time um, for me anyway, just to kind of clean everything up. So if there, it's any of these wine or mead bottles, I'll just cut off the shrink, uh, the shrink stuff that was around the corks. I usually will give three rinses. And just like my carboys and my kegs, you can see my videos on those. Um, I usually consider that good enough. Maybe on these bigger balls, I might give four little rinses just to make sure I get everything out. And then I just set them up here in my uh, little drying rack just so that they can drain out and dry out completely. Uh, one of the nice things, like some of these uh, beer labels, sometimes they'll just completely fall off. These ones here, they'll just will peel off really easily. Um, for some of the ones that are a little bit more difficult, I'll just use a little razor blade and just kind of um, sometimes even just uh, getting them started will work and then you can uh, peel them off. Sometimes you have to scrape them right off. For some bottles where it's uh, a real hassle to get them off, oftentimes I won't bother uh, cleaning and reusing those. But this is just a super sweet, easy way for you to uh, clean, up, clean up bottles. Um, if you're bottling your homebrew uh, regularly or if you're sending it off to competition or you just have like a special batch and you want some of the bottles, you can put it away for a few years, like a nice imperial stout or barley wine or something. Uh, it's a good way to do that, keeping it really nice and clean. The only thing I'll have to do after, uh, that I will do after these are dried is fire them into a box or even uh, stack them in milk crates just with uh, foil over top or something like that, just like a loose sheet of foil, just to prevent dust from getting into them so that when I do go to use them, all I need to do is sanitize and you're good to go. Okay, a uh, couple last uh, tips for you. 
Um, first of all, uh, one thing that I always do whenever I am um, pouring a bottle of beer or whatever that I have bottled up is when I'm done with that, I will just give it a quick rinse out um, just so that there's no residue left in there or scum on the bottom or anything like that just because if you're not cleaning it that night or the night you know within a couple of days you wind up with uh some infection some nastiness kind of going in there and if you can just avoid that to begin with it makes that whole pbw process a little bit easier so always rinse out your bottles like that night or the next night uh depending on how many you've had um because that'll make the cleaning process easier secondly is when you do wind up with some of this um kind of glue or whatever left on there an easy way to deal with it is just olive oil um, you can use something like Goo Gone or you know a product like that but using uh, olive oil is a really nice way to get rid of that glue uh, without using some kind of chemical in there or something that gives off like a, a harsh odor uh, a lot of those products have uh, you know really strong fake orange citrus smell or something like that that can be hard to get rid of um, and how many, how many times you really want to wind up having to wash your bottle right just to get rid of that so you can just rub it on here this one will probably take a little bit longer i'm just gonna let it soak but you can see this one side here it completely got rid of that glue so that's just a, a great final tip just to clean these things up because if you are going to go to the trouble of bottling and whatnot why not have them nice and clean um yeah that way uh you get to reuse any of the bottles from uh beer and wine whatever that you do buy so there you are folks uh that's a way to clean up your bottles uh so that you can bottle your sweet products so until next time keep it at 11.